In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. First day story before the gospel, the, the sermon today. Um, Vicki and Mimi, this story is for you because their mother, Vicki's grandmother, and or Vicki's mother and uh, Mimi's grandmother passed last week, and their saint was Saint Phanurius, her saint. She didn't follow that name, but that was her favorite saint. Saint Phanurius is called the Finder, and we pray to him when we've lost something. And I know for myself, I think I've prayed to him a hundred times. And at least a hundred times he's found what I've been looking for. Well, uh, Eason, one of the newer members of our church, was totally unfamiliar with St. Fenurius last Sunday, and he had lost something very important one of his, for one of, in the equipment that he needed for his operations. UPS had lost a key that he had that uh, was of value between three and four thousand dollars. It's an expensive key and they lost it. And he was downstairs and I said, well, let's go upstairs and pray to St. Fenurius, who's called the finder. And I said, you know, if, you, if he finds it, what the tradition is you make a cake for him and you bring it. Because when St. Fenurius was 15 when he died, he was a young soldier in love with the Lord and um, he passed at a very young age. So you treat him, you know, the saints you don't just treat as these mature, everyone's mature and old, you treat them the way that they were at the age that they were when they left this life, or passed from this life, so he's 15, so you make a cake to him, he always is, he always liked cake, I assume. I didn't know him personally. <laughs> well, anyway, this week, Eason got um, a call from a company that said that they would, uh, that they would, if he would do this particular work for him, they would give him for free this particular key. And then UPS called the same day and said that they had found the key and were returning it to him. So now Eason has two keys and one cake. So Mimi, that's your grandma's saint comes through again. The uh, the men that are in the in this gospel are in a terrible lot, these two. They are demon-possessed, and then they've been this way a long time, torturing and tormenting people. And it would seem that the relation between them, the pigs, and all of that is a very far thing from us, except to know that the Lord is a great healer and that he has the ability to heal. But it is my contention that, that uh, these two are a symbol for our modern society and some of the some of the things that we have picked up in our society and begin to live with and become just like them caught in tombs away from people and uh, possessed and it is my contention that that is in this case the love of pleasure that our society puts forth as such a wonderful thing for all of us to have Pleasure is something that we all enjoy because it feels good. And we seek after it almost all the time. In our society, we can't stand to have any aches and pains whatsoever. We'll take almost any drug to get rid of any pains that we have. And when we're discomforting in any way, depressed just a tiny little bit, we'll do almost anything to get rid of it. Any, any distraction, any pleasure, any, any movie, any pleasurable thing to get us away from those feelings that are very normal in, in human life of sadness and sorrow, depression, and things that come to us. They're, they're just a part of the life that we live upon the earth. In fact, the Lord himself said it. He said, he said, in this world you'll have sorrow and suffering, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And we see the overcoming in this particular gospel passage today and also related to our own lives. Of course, if we do not believe that there's anything beyond this life, there's no reason to live for passions and for pleasures. Now, absolutely no reason at all, because why not get the most out of life? Why not live for the gusto? Why not uh, 
live as happily and make your life as pleasurable as it possibly can because this is it. And uh, we want to do that. But we know as Christians that that's not the way we live. We know that there is a life beyond this life that we work for, a life of peace and happiness where there is no sorrow, nor sadness, nor sighing, but life everlasting. We know of that life because the Lord pointed the way to it. He made it possible for us to go there. And because of the great relationship that we Orthodox have with the saints and with the life, we actually get that life given to us to some degree while we're on this earth. We see the peace and the happiness and the joy just when a saint like St. Venerius pokes his head through that invisible veil between heaven and earth and just touches us and moves us and does something fabulous for any of us, we know that God is with us. But most of the people of the earth and us often do not remember that. All we remember is that we want to be happy, that we want to feel good, and that we want to take the pleasures of this life. And we take them the same, almost the same as any, any person of the planet takes them. We Christians kind of forget ourselves. Of course, we know that the trap is there. We've seen it. These two men are the example of the trap. What happens is that there is no pleasure in life that is lasting in this life. So therefore, once you have it, you want more of it. Hence addictions, and hence the desire for more and more and more of everything that we have. There is nothing that we can be satisfied with in this life. Not just because that's the way it is in this life, but because advertising itself makes it that way. We are happy with a thing for a while, but they, no one wants you to be happy with something for any long period of time. We, they want you to, after a certain amount of time, want something else that's better than that. The next thing that comes out and the next. And we're all subject to that. We want the best iPhone. We want the best, best of this, the best of that. The next thing that comes along that's the best. And so, so it is with drugs. So it is with alcohol. So it is with all sex, all the pleasures of this life. You can't have them for a while before you want more. They, they are no longer pleasurable, so you have to have more of them to have them and so on and so on. And we become just like these two demoniacs. We become possessed by the passions of this world that hold us into chains that we cannot escape from. And yet, we have the Lord walking into the middle of these two that are so chained and so possessed and so gone from this life because of their addictions and their possessions. And yet he cuts through that. He sends all of those terrible possessions that they have into the swine, which is greatly related to what they are. These possessions in the swine are greatly related. And so he sends them to there. They run into the ocean. They drown themselves. And these men, two men, we turn back to the men, and they are sitting there in their right minds, at peace with themselves, happy and joyful. That is us. That is what we must be. We must be sitting here today, not addicted to anything of this world, but truly possessed by Christ himself, who has us in his hands and gives us happiness, joy, and peace in this life. This is a great joy to us, a great happiness. My brothers and sisters, let Christ take your life and possess us with true possession of eternal life so that we can live forever and eternally in his joy and happiness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.